So everybody, 2022 is in the bag. This is the final video. We will get a grand total, plus you will see all the games that I beat for December. So the very first game that I beat was God of War Ragnarok. The reason why was because it came with my PlayStation 5 bundle. I wanted to play God of War Ragnarok and I was happy that the bundle came with it because it's probably not going to be on Game Pass for PlayStation anytime soon. This game, I like the story, where it went. So you're going to finish off the story with, of course, you're going to get Kratos and Atreus and see what's happening with them. I do like that you got to see a little bit of his wife and what happened with his wife and how they interacted because in 2018 they didn't show at all anything with the wife, which I understand because she had just passed away. So it was good to see him dreaming about the family, dreaming about what was going to happen, and she helped give him insight on what he should do. And I also liked that you got to bounce back and forth, but I thought that they used it too much. I didn't like that there was too many times that they bounced back and forth between Atreus and Kratos. It was just like Ellie and Abby. I didn't mind the narrative and the backstory, but I just didn't like that you kept going back and forth. I felt like they should have stopped after the second time, but they kept going and it was what they wanted to do. The combat system was about the same. Um, I do see that the battles were a little bit more difficult, which I really didn't complain about because I was like, hey, it was a tough battle and I finally beat that whatever creature or person it was. I got to see more of Thor. I thought Thor was hilarious. He was funny as hell. And I did like the fact that the family, you saw the, not just the brothers that you had defeated in 2018, but you also got to see the daughter and the mom. And you battled the big bad of the, the, the show and it was an epic battle at the very end. I did like it. I recommend anybody who has played God of War 2018, give this one a shot. It's definitely worth your time. After God of War, I go with a staple and that is Oregon Trail, the Wii version. This one, you have to beat Oregon Trail 12 times. There is three chapters of family members and there is like three of each. So you literally have like four chapters, five chapters, whatever in each one. Now, I didn't like that. I didn't like that I have to beat Oregon Trail that many times. And the reason why is because it kind of got stale after a while. I, um, I'm an avid fan of Oregon Trail, but just beating it 12 times or more is just a little excessive. I understand they want you to see everybody's story, how everybody went through the Oregon Trail, but I could have got that about five or six times and I would have been fine. I don't mind, you know, seeing four chapters of different families and different times. They could have did that once or twice each. Because what it was is there was three different times people traveled the Oregon Trail. It was the very first time and then there was two more times that people don't talk about. They just remember the very first time. I get it. You want people to understand that. But for me, it got really, really old fast. And because I kept playing, I was just like, I. there was a moment when I was like, oh, there's two more times I got to do this. I literally just burned through them and just like, I didn't even care that I was like, oh, whoever is going to go, it goes. The one thing I don't like about this version is that you can get all the way to Oregon City, literally be about to start the threshold of Oregon City and see the fireworks going and you can die. They can say winter is just hit. I don't know why this version stops you the minute winter hits. It does for the 3DS as well. If you have the 3DS version, this is exactly the same. I didn't like that. I didn't like that for the fact that there is still people who will trek the winter and some will not make it, but not the whole family. The, there's got to be at least one person who's going to make it. So the fact that you made it to winter and just you, you, you're you done, you're dead. There's no, hey, people toughed through it and made it through and got through the winter, but the family member passed away. No, it literally is, you all died. There's no, give you a little bit of a grace period, it's you're all dead. So if you don't like that, I don't recommend this. I don't recommend this version at all. But if you like to try it out, at least just beat it a couple times. Um, I did know Death Run, this part of the game, finally. And I was happy about that. I, and they even gave you little trophies, little achievements. So if you're an achievement hunter, definitely try this version out. After that, I tried a game that was in my backlog. And I got this really, really dirt cheap. It was like $5. And that is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. This is based off the movie, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. 
if you don't like the music, you don't like the cheery atmosphere, you're not gonna like this game. It's a bunch of mini games thrown into a game. So basically you could be singing the songs from the movie. You could be trying to get the little creatures away from the big bad and helping them move to wherever they gotta do it. Match games, different things like that. I didn't mind it, but it does get repetitive and the song does get a little annoying sometimes because it's just constantly playing in the background. You do have moments where you are going to be like, oh, this kind of mini game, okay. But other than that, it's just like WarriorWare, where it's just a bunch of mini games. So if you're a mini game person who wants to take this on the road, I recommend it. If you have a kid, let them try this. But it's not a game that I would be like, oh yeah, grab it, pay a lot of money for it. If it's dirt cheap, get it. If it's not, just wait until it goes on sale again. The next game on the list was called Twin Mirror. This is the people that made all the Life is- well not all the Life is Strange games, but the first Life is Strange game and a couple other games that I've played, like uh, Gerarda, The Flame in Winter. They are Donuts and they made this game and I've been waiting for it for a while because I didn't know if it was on physical and when I saw it was on sale, they were doing like an end of the year sale, I snagged it up. It was like 75% off. I would definitely recommend checking out if you want to play a story-based game. This is kind of like Life is Strange meets L.A. Noir. Um, you are a person, a, a guy who finds out that your brother has passed away. So you have to go back to your old town that you left and said you would never come back to just to pay your respects. As you get over to the town, you find out that your niece says to you, I don't think my dad passed away. I think he was killed. I don't think it was an accident. And so... You can either A, say yes to the investigation, or B, say no. But I think the story doesn't progress if you say no, so you still kind of are in the town for a little bit trying to figure out what happened. You do, throughout the story, have several chances that you could be attacked by somebody because you don't know who actually killed your brother. And throughout the story, you have moments of... You have like a, a person who's an imaginary person that you made up to deal with all the trauma that you've had in your life. So you'll have that person talking to you. So you have to balance that person who's talking to you and the people in your life that are talking to you. So you have to find out who you want to talk to. Do you want to talk to the person that's imaginary or the person that's sitting next to you? And I I don't know if I really like the, the world that they made for the your brain as you're trying to process everything. It was like a 50-50 thing. Most of the time it was just a maze you went through. But I do know that they were trying something different and it was sometimes it was cool I was like oh the, this is dope this is different but for the most part it's just you're making choices and if you didn't make the right choice the character the imaginary character would just shake the head and go mm, no and then just like you had to try again so I don't know if uh I would appreciate going through 50 million doors to try to figure out the puzzle but it had its good points um I'm not hating the game but it wasn't the a home run for me like it was when I played Life is Strange. The game is good. Uh, find it on sale if you want to try it out. I do recommend anybody who does like narrative based games to try this out, but anybody else, you probably are going to pass on this one. The next game is called Tetris Effect Connected. This is a game that I've been wanting to play for a while and I started it and actually just would play a couple levels and then put it down. Um, it's kind of like five or six worlds and then a final world where you have multiple stages in each world and then the final one is just like 90 lines. That was very difficult, the last one. I'm not a Tetris buff like Paul, but I can play Tetris and I used to play it all my time. And I have played the whole game and I liked it. Now, there is parts that made my eyes hurt. There was some colors and backgrounds that didn't blend well together. And so I was like squinting to try to like get through that section just to get to the next section. And that kind of frustrated me a little bit, but I get it because it's got flashing strobing lights and for people who don't like flashing strobing lights, you're not going to like this one. But it was a game that I did like and it took me a couple months to finally beat because it was really difficult at the end. I remember I was just level side, like I think it was like, it goes up to speed 10 and speed 10 just destroyed me at uh, several times of just like, I get to a good point and I'm like 60 lines or 70 lines left and I was like, oh, I got 20 lines left and then speed 10 to hit. And I was just having to go, Ugh. like it's those tournaments, you just have to like, just put guess, try, 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 make lines, make lines, make lines, just keep going. 
finally got it and I'm happy. I do recommend to anybody who likes Tetris to try this one out. It's on Game Pass, so get it before it leaves. Next game is The Walking Dead, the final season. We finally get to see what happens to Clementine, the very end. Um, for those who are wanting to not be spoiled, I'm not gonna spoil the story. Basically, Clementine finds a new group of people and finds AJ, which is a major plot point. Like they, they literally tell you in the trailer that he, she finds AJ. So you have to help keep AJ safe and you have, and it literally is like a role reversal. She becomes Lee, AJ becomes Clementine. And so you have to shape AJ and how he's going to interact with everything and see what happens. Um, the ending could end badly. Uh, don't recommend if you really are attached to Clementine to see what happens. You could have a have ha end good. So you could have endings where people can get really, really injured and you, cause I saw all the endings. I watched all the endings cause you, what happens, but I got a good ending. I got an ending where everybody made it out and only a couple people died. So people that I chose to die, uh, it was inevitable. I think there's, I don't think you can get everybody to make it to the end, but I had a good time with it. I liked the way they went with the story. I will admit I was raging at the end when I was like, oh no, they're not going to do this. Oh no, they're not going to do this. Like I was yelling at the screen. And then when they, they, uh, did what they did, I was like, okay, I'm glad I made, uh, AJ the way I made AJ. So yeah. I'm, I know I'm being vague, but I don't want to ruin the story for anybody who's still waiting to play the games. I have a couple buddies who they don't want to play it because they don't want to see it happens to Clementine, but play it, try it out. The next game on the list was a PSP game, and that is Toy Story 3. I finally got my PSP working again. Thank you, Running Retro, for helping me figure it out. Running Retro said it was either a cable or the battery. I got both, and it was the cable. So now I can start playing my PSP again. So this was the first game that I played. I had this in my backlog for a while because I've been trying to play this since the beginning when my PSP stopped working. This is the third movie. It's the tie into the third movie. You literally are Woody, Buzz, all the creatures and the characters from the original. And you are shipped off to a daycare and you have to find out what happens in the daycare and get all the characters away from the bad toys that are at the daycare that are stopping the toys from getting injured and stuff like that. But yeah, I do recommend this. I do recommend anybody who likes Toy Story to try it out. It is kind of like mini games, again, where you have each section you have to deal with something. And so like the character has to platform to the part of the area where they need to be. Like, um, for example, there was a part where you had to distract the kids at the daycare to get through to the next section. So you had to find batteries and you had to maneuver around the kids. And if they noticed you, you got taken. If you didn't get noticed, you got the batteries. You put the batteries into like the, the stereo system and it plays music and all the kids run around and start dancing. And then you could just maneuver around that. I do recommend people to try this one out. It's, it's not a bad game. It's a good, actually a, a good game for a tie-in movie. And it's a sweet story. So I liked Toy Story 3 and you will like this game. The next game is called Skate. This is the series that I started with the third game, which was kind of weird that I started with the third game, but I didn't really play it because I picked Tony Hawk and I was just like, I'm sticking with Tony Hawk. Not anything bad about Skate, but when I finally got an Xbox 360, I was like, oh, well, let me just grab a Skate 3 and try it because I like Skate games. This one is a lot better than Skate 3. Shocker, I know. Uh, so in Skate, the original Skate game, you are trying to get on the, the cover magazine for Skate the Magazine and for Thrasher. There actually is a, a development cycle. It's not just milestones like in the third game where you just sell a lot of boards. Just keep selling boards. There's no ending. This one actually gives you an ending. It does tell you, hey, you're a Skate icon now. So you have to get all the pro missions done. There is actually Skate where it does give you an accomplishment for beating everybody. In the third game, if you played a game of Skate, it really didn't affect the story to give you points or do anything for you, but then the first one it did. And you also have like death races and, and thrasher stuff that if you bomb a mega ramp and you get crushed and bones and stuff like that, you get points towards stuff. I do like this version a lot better. I'm sad that this was not the version that I started with. But actually, correction, I might have been more bummed with Skate 3 
and had a different version and feel to it because I played Skate 1 and enjoyed it. The only thing I didn't like about Skate is you couldn't get off the board, so if you were stuck somewhere, you just had to figure out how to get around it. And that took a lot of time because of the fact that you in Skate 3, you could just hop onto something, get on down and jump and do what you need to do. But in Skate 1, you had to literally figure out how to get around something. And I didn't mind it, but it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so irritated. And there was some parts that glitched. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because it was on the new console, but certain times the speed would just go crazy. Like it go wild. I don't know if it was because it was catching up or what was going on, but it was, there was moments where I was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And my skater just goes like flicking back and forth because I was trying to stop it from crashing and the skater just crashed. And so I enjoyed this one. I definitely recommend it. If you're into skate games, this one is actually better than Skate 3, so try it out. I recommend it to all my skate buddies. You're not going to be disappointed in this one. Into the last game is Peggle. This is a game that I've been wanting to play for a long time. This is a game that is kind of like a pinball game meets a breakout meets a couple other games that are puzzle based and you have to hit so many objects to knock them out. Basically, you are shooting the little mini balls down to hit the orange objects and if you get all the orange objects out you finish the puzzle you finish the the board and you're done and you move on to the next one there's a lot of boards in this and that's probably why i never beat this game before because there's like 10 boards and each board has like five sections so you you have to go for a while to get it all the way through the end i do recommend this to anybody who has nothing to do and it's a time filler kind of game it's one of those games where you just play to play it, like Feeding Frenzy. You play to play it. If you want to play it all the way through, it's a fun game. I do recommend it to anybody who's into these types of games. It's not going to waste your time and be a bad waste of time. So <laughs> try it out. The only frustrating thing is if you get a bad bounce and it goes into just the void, you get a retry, but it does have frustrating moments. So keep going, get through the frustration and beat the game. And the very last game of the year was Grand Theft Auto V. I wanted to play GTA again and I decided to go with Grand Theft Auto V. I streamed it for the first couple hours and then got sucked into the world again and I wanted to play it all the way through. So I kept going. I just kept going through the world. This is one funny story. Um, I do recommend to anybody who wants to play GTA, but it's not meant for kids. Uh, there is some sex scenes in here in this game. so. If you're not into that, I don't recommend it, but this is Trevor, Michael, and Franklin, and you're following Trevor, Michael, and Franklin because their lives intertwine. Franklin tries to get back a car that Michael couldn't pay for his boss, and Michael takes the kid under his wing and says, hey, I'll help you out. As they go to stop a bust and get some money so that they can live for the next couple of days to go on to the next year, that bust that they got the jewelry leads to Trevor finding his old buddy and realizing that he had not died. And so now Trevor's in your life and you have to figure out how to maneuver your friend who is technically not your friend, who is wanting to know what happened and you had hold on to a lie for 10 years. So you are trying to figure out how to maneuver that. And at the end you have to choose as Franklin, do you want to stop your friends who you've just made and be okay with the guys that they both have messed around with and got angry or do you just let them live and deal with the chaos so i recommend this to anybody who's a gta fan or anybody who's into open world games this is a good one so everybody here is the grand total 162. i finished the year off with 162. xbox was 92. playstation was 22. Sega was 4, Nintendo was 33, Atari was 1, Neo Geo was 1, PC was 6, and the Arcade was 3. So, how did I do? I don't know. I think Xbox won this year. <laughs> and the only reason why is because I had Game Pass. If I had Game Pass on PlayStation, it probably would have been closer to each other. But next year, I'm going to get PlayStation Game Pass and let go of Xbox and I'll just buy whatever I want from Xbox. So let me know. What was your grand total? What was your highlights of the year? Or just in general, are you going to start keeping track for next year? 
Did you see a couple people that you want to join their groups? Uh, for those who keep asking, here are the groups that I uh, know of and can remember at this time. Club 52. Level 50. I don't know if they're going to keep level 50 because they were talking about changing it, but that is the name as of right now. There is Cartridge Club. They have been going on for a long time, and if you want to join them, you can. Now, if you just want to do it by yourself and you don't want to compete like me, it's not a competition. If you want to do it, go for it. Make videos, and you don't have to make a video every month. If you want to wait until the very end, you can make one at the end. So, thank you for watching, keeping track with me, and enjoying all these videos. I will continue this through to 2023. I enjoy it. I have fun with this. I don't like to set a number. I just keep going. And if you are new, check out a couple other videos. Hit the sub button if you like the content. Give this video a like, and I'll catch you next time. Enjoy a safe 2023 and I will be gaming and I hope that you will be gaming and keep along with me and write it all down. So let's uh, let's show you. I had two sheets this time of games that I had beaten. So we're going to do the ceremonial toss it over and <laughs> toss it over and go like that because it didn't want to go away. It's like, no, please keep going. But I am done and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games too.